it, if we just come and we enjoy his word, we're supposed to enjoy his word. We're supposed to enjoy our time of fellowship with each other and our time of fellowship with him. But if we don't actually change, see, the word of God and the spirit of God has been given to us to conform us to the image of Christ. And so I don't want to leave this uh, without doing what I know to do as a teacher, to try and give it, make, make, at least make as, uh, you aware of all the tools that are available that might help us, me included, change. Knowledge alone is not enough. It is knowledge that has to be incorporated into your being. And it's really more than just mental knowledge. It has to become you. So, look in uh, Romans 12, two real familiar passages here. And then I want to sh share with you some tools that are available that you might want to take advantage of. So, Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, mainly I'm try trying to get to verse 2 here. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So the renewing of the mind is very important. It's not the only thing involved, but it is part of what's involved. We could go to other places. The same writer, Paul, he wrote to Timothy, study to show yourself approved. Well, study has to everything to do with the mind. You know, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for exhortation and doctrine and so forth. He says study. A lot of people, uh, not probably not so many at this church, but in a lot of churches, the kind I grew up, up in Mo most of the time between Sunday and Wednesday the Bible was never opened at home it was only brought and opened during the church service that's not exactly study to show yourself approved like your life depends on it <laughs> so there is a renewing of the mind Dave has helped us along this line more he's helped me personally uh, and I, I know you too more than any other minister that's ever been in my life because he taught us the laws of meditation. Oh, thank God for the laws of meditation. And learning to leave every scripture in its context. Remember all those wonderful lessons he gave us? Like It's like an artist's brush. Every word is like another stroke of the brush. And God's painting an image on the inside of you, see? Thank God for the laws of meditation. Then he went one step further and taught us about assimilation where you assimilate now whole chapters and then whole books and really the whole New Testament. And very often for me, and I'm sure it's this way for you too, a difficult passage in one book, I just don't understand that. And, and no matter, I, and I'll get my references and whatever, but I still, I don't, something, when I don't understand it, there's something down on the inside that itches me <laughs> or scratches me or something. It's, it's like you don't get that yet. Now, there's quite a few of those in here I still don't, I don't get. I know there's more than what I know. I know there's more. <laughs> I know there's more than what I understand currently at this moment. How's that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and thank God for praying in other tongues, which I never knew before we came here that that had to do. Really, if, if you want to know the truth of it, verse 1, most people take verse 1 to mean where it says, Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Most people think that's talking about fasting. And it's okay to put fasting there, but really, if we're going to follow the laws of meditation, what was he talking about back in chapter 8? What's he been talking about? The, whole, the Spirit itself makes intercession for you with groanings that cannot be uttered. He's talking about making that body of yours that likes to do all of the busy work and all of the fun things, make that rascal sit still and pray in other tongues. Your body will not like it. I've been at this a long time. My body still doesn't like it. <laughs> you know? But you have to offer it as a living sacrifice. Now, through that process, eventually you offer it as a living sacrifice on the altar of the cross, whatever your cross is. 
Okay, that's not where we are. But, so I thank God for meditation. I thank God for assimilation. I thank God for the the teacher, the Holy Spirit. I'll go ahead and mention this one, 1 Corinthians 14, 2, where it talks about when he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. No man understands him, howbeit in the Spirit he speak in mysteries. And I'll never forget the first time I heard Dave say, okay, we know two things are going on when you're praying in tongues. Number one, you're talking to God. Number two, mysteries are being communicated. And he says, how many of you think that you are explaining mysteries to God? <laughs> and it's so ridiculous, you know. But you never forget that. No, the Holy Spirit is explaining mysteries to you. Maybe you've got family troubles. Well, the Holy Spirit knows the answer to those family troubles. Maybe you've got a sickness in your body. The Holy Spirit knows how to get that out. Maybe it's this, maybe it's that, whatever it is. The Holy Spirit is the answer. And the Holy Spirit is our teacher, the revelator of the word. He's, he's the one that's really been sent to reveal Jesus so that we can see him and by that process see the Father. Okay. So let's bring it down home, though. We've been in John 14, 15, 16, and 17 here for a while. And what it's really about is not to have our scholarly feathers stroked. Yes, I am an expert. Who cares? Can you get that kid out of the wheelchair right there? See, that's what we're talking about is revival. The change that will take place in us so that the works of the Father can be done through us. Okay? So what can we do? Is there anything we can do to be not conformed to this world but being transformed by the renewing of the mind? Well, I, wanna, I brought some tools from my website, and I think there may also be at Dave's. I'm just not as familiar. These are at garycarpenter.org. Everything at my website is free, and we will not automatically put you on a mailing list for going there. We're not after your money. We're after you. <laughs> okay? <laughs> we're after revival. Okay? But so you don't have to fear. And you, we're not asking you for your email address or anything. You know, just come and dine. Okay? For free. But if you go to the website, and then you click on media, and I printed this out myself so I can follow my own links here. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of categories there, and in the, uh, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a thing called printed materials. If you click on printed materials, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 different things that are there for free. They're in PDF format. You all know what PDF means. You can print them out on your home computer. It doesn't cost you anything. One of them that I've had there for quite a while is called the John 14 through 17 Confessions. If you print it out, this is what it looks like. Okay, you see it? And I think it's uh, 12 pages long. If you print double-sided, you only have to use six sheets of paper. <laughs> okay. And what I've done there is go verse by verse through John 14, 15, 16, and 17. And I've taken every verse and made it into a present tense now confession. God calls those things which be not as though they were. Abraham had to learn to call those things which be not as though they were. It behooves us to learn to call those things which be not as though they were. So I wanted to let you know that this is there. I'll give you guys a copy tonight. I don't know if you have a computer or not. You can have this. And if anyone needs one and doesn't have a, if you have a, if you don't have a computer or any way of printing that out, we'll mail you one for free. Just let us know. You, you can email us or, you know, write us a letter. The address and everything is at the website. Now, for example, let me just, let's go through a few of these. Because, can I, can I get a, no, I want to do that. If I was to take a show of hands, how many of you have read before this series, John 14, 15, 16, and 17? I'm pretty sure every hand will go up. I hope every hand goes up. <laughs> okay. But yet we don't seem to be walking in it yet. Can, can we say that there may be some transformation yet to be accomplished? There may be some renewing of the mind that yet needs to be done. This is one thing that you can do to help renew the mind. So... 
For example, John 14, 12 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. All right? I made that into a confession. Okay? So just repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe on you, whom God hath sent. The works that you do, I do also. And greater works I do, because you are with the Father. Let's continue. Whatever I ask in your name, you do it, that the Father may be glorified in you. Anything I ask in your name, Lord, you do it. I love you, Lord, and I do whatever you say. Jesus, you ask the Father to send the Comforter to me. Holy Spirit, you live with me forever. I know you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> you are the Spirit of Truth. You are with me, and you live in me. Jesus, you have not left me comfortless. You have come to me. And I see you, Jesus, because you live, I live also. Can you tell something is happening? Can you tell? Just this one. Here lately, I had an assignment. I'm not going to tell you how long. But he says, I want you to, I want you to walk the floor. Remember in the early days, he had me do those um, three verses for four hours a day. Thank God this one wasn't that long. <laughs> But it's still in progress. He wants me a certain amount of time every day just doing these two verses. Now I'll read you the verses first, and then we'll, we'll do the confession. And it's John 14, 14 and 15. Verses 14 and 15. The verse reads like this. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Oh, I'm sorry. It's John 14, verses 13 and 14. Sorry. He says, Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And it's so interesting to me because Jesus seldom repeats himself in two consecutive verses. But he does right there. So he's having me say it like this. Whatever I ask in your name, Lord, you do it, that the Father may be glorified in you. Anything I ask, in your name, Lord, you do it. And then I do that again. And then I say it again. And then I say it again. And right after that, I say it again. <laughs> and then I say it again. And he has me do it it's more than an hour at a time. What's he trying to do there? He's trying to make a new track in my brain. <laughs> He's trying to make something happen, not only in my mind, but in my heart. See, because even though intellectually... Intellectually, I know that's in there. I can teach that that's in there. There's a hesitancy when I see a wheelchair case in a, in a Walmart or somewhere. There's a he little hesitancy there. What would cause that? What would cause that? It's called doubt. <laughs> We'd like to put some other name on it, but it's called unbelief. It's called doubt. Not sure he'll do what he said he'd do. Well, how are we going to change that? That you be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And one, one way you can, one way, one tool that you can use is calling those things which be not as though they were or the power of confession. And eventually, I remember, I'll never forget, uh, way back when he was trying to rescue me from that poverty mentality I had. I just, I grew up in, uh, and they love God. I, I mean, those people are all in heaven, or most of them. <laughs> anyway. They love God, but they just had this mindset that if you really have God, you had to be poor. They used to joke, but it wasn't a joke. <laughs> Talk, Lord, we're praying for our pastor. Lord, you keep him humble, we'll keep him poor. <laughs> See, I'm not the only one. <laughs> they, they did it like a joke, but they were about half serious with it too, you know. They were serious too. <laughs> So I grew up with this mentality, but then when I really wanted to go after God, part of me rebelled because part of me did not want to be poor. 
And then I find out God doesn't want me to be poor either. So he has me take those three verses and say them four hours a day on that assignment. Four hours a day. And it took me forever. I thought I was never going to. I started and stopped. I can't even tell you how long. Weeks went by where I'd start and stop. I could not make it. But I find it. And again, I'd like to tell you that it was my great faith. No, our situation just finally got so bad. You know, if your toes are hanging out over the Grand Canyon, <laughs> one more inch and you're gone. <laughs> That's about the way we were financially. We're <laughs> one more inch and we're gone, you know. And there wasn't anything else to do. There was nothing left to do. So I just thought I finally made it for that first four hours. God, I thought I was going to die. And you think, you know, that you think uh, what you want is liquid sunshine to pour down from heaven and feel the brush of an angel's wing. And is that Gabriel's trumpet I hear? And, you know, that's what you'd like. I didn't feel nothing. <laughs> and did your situation change? Yes, it did. It got worse. <laughs> but I, I, st I kept doing it. I, once I made it once, then I kept doing it. It's kind of like that four-minute mile. Once you do it, then you can do it. It went on for weeks, and then it went on for months. But suddenly, I'll never forget it. I don't know how to better to describe it. Something changed. Wh whether it went from my head to my heart or how you describe it, I don't know. But what was theory became reality. What was theorem became my life. <laughs> and it's like I stepped out of one room that I'd lived in for a long time and I stepped across the threshold into a new room. And I've never been the same since. And I think if I hadn't have obeyed him, I don't know that we ever would have survived the kind of ministry that he called us to. Because for us, we had to believe to do a lot of stuff with no financial support in the natural at all. None at all. We weren't allowed to sell anything. We didn't, we didn't have it. You know, we didn't take up offerings from any church. We paid our own expense. Anyway, I could, all the instructions we got from him, I don't know that I ever would have obeyed him, been able to do what he called me to do had I not obeyed him in that early, early instruction. Well, now he's calling us to this revival where there's no doubt. There's no unbelief left. We believe it like he believes it. He's trying to get us there. And my Bible tells me that that transformation is done by the renewing of the mind. Yes, the Holy Spirit's involved. Yes, this is building on Romans chapter 8. Yes, it has. We, we're not changing the basic foundation of spend a lot of times praying in the Holy Ghost and let the Holy Spirit teach you these things spiritually. But you can't take away from Romans 12 too either. And that's by the renewing of the mind. So I just encourage you, if you've done this before, great. If you've lost your copy down through the years, I recommend that you, you get a copy. Now, so I don't forget to tell you, on that same page, okay, here we go again. Go back to the website, go to media. Then you're going to see another section on that page right in the middle. It says meditation, worship, relaxation in his presence with scripture. Christian scripture. And what this is, there's one by me there, and there's one by Alan Taylor there. And this is audio. On mine, I literally went through these confessions, and there's music in the background. It's relaxing. How many, have, I see some nods, some people have, have taken advantage of this. This is free also. There's something about that though, if you're having a real stressful time, I, I, I would advise you going there. Don't just listen. Add your voice. But that's, a, that's available. And while you're there, listen to Alan's. He did one called Baptized in the Holy Spirit. It is really good. It's really good. So I, I just wanted you guys to know that those tools are available. Now, one more here. Let's just do one more little passage here, okay? I think this is good for us. This one starts here in John 15, 15. We'll just do the confessions. You've, re you've heard, heard the scriptures your whole life. Uh-huh. 
if you just like the music and you just want to hear the music without my voice, yeah, okay. There, there's another, he's saying, in case you can't hear him on the message here, there's another link on that same page that says instrumental only. Well, that if you just want to listen to the music, cause just, if you're just having one of those days and you need a soothing, <laughs> I don't want to hear that, Gary, I just want to hear the music, that's what that is, okay? And it, and it is, it's, it's soothing, it'll, it'll help calm you down, okay? And you can just pray in tongues during that one, you know, just pray in tongues, okay? All right, so let's pick this up here again in John 15, 15. It says, you do not call me your servant. Say it after me. You do not call me your servant. For a servant does not know what his Lord is doing. You call me your friend. Everything that the Father tells you, Lord, you make known unto me. Did you ever think of it that way? Jesus, I did not choose you. You have chosen me. Mike, he chose you. So you thought you chose him. He chose you. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Let's finish this one. You have chosen me and ordained me. That I should go and bring forth fruit. And that my fruit should remain. Whatever I ask the Father in your name. You give it to me. Jesus. You have commanded us to love one another. If the world hates me. I know that it hated you before it hated me. If I rubbed the world, the world would love its own. But I am not of the world. Jesus, you have chosen me out of the world. Therefore, the world hates me. You see, if we can, it won't be a surprise. When persecution comes, if you have pre-programmed your mind with this, it's been a while since we've taught on this verse. There's one in Timothy that says, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And the litmus test is, been suffering any persecution? <laughs> How godly are you living? Because <laughs> it says... <laughs> Let's keep going here just a little. It said, I'm not greater than you, Lord. The world persecuted you. The world persecutes me also. If the world kept your saying, they will keep mine also. Lord Jesus, the world does not know the Father who sent you. But the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, has come from the Father to me. He testifies of you, and I testify of you. We could go on and on. I'm telling you, this is a great tool to use to help renew the mind. And it's available for free. And I'm telling you now, on that day when you stand before him, and you say... I know I, that Gary, he had those confessions that would have helped my mind, but he was selling them, and I couldn't afford it. You liar, liar, pants on fire. I'm going to say, no, they were there for free. I, I, my hands are clean. <laughs> All right, let's do go to John 17 for just a moment. Not first, John. Hang on. Going the wrong way. Actually, let's back up to 14 again. No, I'm not going to start all over again. I, I just can't get away from this. See, this is the verse, whether you know it or not. If you're a part of the prayer center, somehow or another, this verse hooked you like a fish. This verse, John 14, 12. If not, the, if, maybe not the literal verse, but the truth of it. 
got you. And here's the verse. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater than these, I leave out the word works because it's in italics, it's not really there. Greater than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Now, we normally just quote that verse a lot because that's really kind of our foundational verse here. That's what we believe. Do you believe that? I believe it too, but back up one. Look at verse 11. You see there where it says, He that believeth on me? That word believe is in the previous verse. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. See, and by the time he gets to the end of John 17, in fact, pinch it together here. Go to the end of John 17, right near the end of it. He's saying, when he says, he that believeth on me, he, he's not just pulling out of the air. He's saying, you've got to believe what I just said. I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. That's how these works are being done. And then by the time we get to John 17, he says, verse 23, verse 22, the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me. That is how the works are to continue. It's still him. It's still the Father in him doing the works. But him is now in you. <laughs> and he went through this meticulously, very slowly, like we've been doing for these past several weeks, explaining like Jane see the ball, trying to get it down where us rational creatures our little brains can get a hold of this and go, what? Because these natural men are going, well, how can this, how could you be in me? They have no idea what's coming. But thank God we're on this side of the resurrection. We, we have the rest of the New Testament to understand what happened. And he had to be glorified. His form had to be changed, seated at the right hand of the Father, where he can become our Adam and literally rebirth our spirit. But he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. So he's going, look, these works are going to continue. But you have to believe me. Believe what? That the Father is in me. And that I am in you. <laughs> that the Father is in me. And I am in you. So let's, let's just, let's, let's say that a few minutes. Say, Lord, I believe you. Lord, I believe the, you. Works will the works will continue. Because now... It's the Father in you, and you in me. Lord, whatever I ask in your name, you do it. And whatever I ask the Father in your name, he gives it to me. Lord, I, I'm getting this. The works are to continue. It's not by my own power. It's not by my own holiness. It's you, Lord. With, it's really the Father in you. But you're in me. I believe on you. I believe what you said. You're in the Father. The Father's in you. And you're both in me. The works continue. Christ in me. The Anointed One in me. That's how the works continue. And then you, say, you sandwich in between there all of that teaching. I am the vine. I mean, so many ways trying to get it across. I am the vine. You are the branches. Trying to get us. I mean, a branch, if you, if, you, if you take a branch and break it off and let it dry a couple of days, it's just a stick. Isn't it? <laughs> Hello, sticks. <laughs> get it straight. The stick can't do it. It's the life that flows through the stick, if you'll allow me. The life that flows through us, that's what gets it done. See? It's, it is. He was, he was trying over and over all these different ways to get it down to where we can understand it. But he says, this only works for people that believe on me. Or in other words, believe what I'm telling you here is the truth. But see, the enemy, he's always going to be, trust me, He's always, always, always going to be pointing at you, you little stick you. <laughs> pointing at your faults. 
pointing out your dryness, pouring out every little thing. Like, you know, what, you know what's needful in a stick? <laughs> to be connected to the vine. And let and not not be blocking, the, you know the flow. Amen. I am the vine; you are the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. But if you abide in me and my words abide in you, that's part of believing what he said. Oh, you're going to bear much fruit. That part's great, isn't it? Ah, oh, but the good news is, then the Father comes; and He's going to prune you. Ow! <laughs> So that you can bear more fruit. Well, that, welcome, to the, welcome to the message of mortification. Prune, has anyone ever experienced any pruning? I don't need that show of hands. I know you have. <laughs> oh, maybe once or twice. Yeah, we've had a little pruning. Yeah. Uh-huh. But it's still him. It's still him. What matters is the life that's flowing through the branch. Say it again. I believe you. It's the Father in you. You in me. There's no reason for me to doubt, Lord. You said it. I've got it in red letters in my Bible. <laughs> I know you said it. And you can't lie. It's the Father in you. And you in me. Father, say, the works of the Father will continue. And they're going to continue even more abundantly. Because there's so many believers now. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now if you tell Dave that I finished this early. <laughs> I shall pray fire and brimstone. No. <laughs> Do, do take, it, take advantage of this. I'm gonna, if y'all don't mind, I'm going to give you this copy. I don't know if you have a printer or anything. Okay. You can have that. And uh, this is what it looks like if you do get with somebody that has a computer. That's what it looks like at my website. We're going to go ahead and start the confessions now. I just, there's just nothing in me that feels like we should start something new. And I think he's said what he wants to say about... John 14 through 17. So let's just go ahead and do the confessions. Does anyone need a copy? New Zealand needs a copy over here. Tell me your name again, sir. Tim. What? Tim. Tim. If y'all haven't met him, this is Tim from New Zealand. How long are you going to be here? Uh, we're only here for a week. A week. A week. Do you hear that? I'm here for a week. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> another Kiwi. Glory to God. Uh, New Zealander. Mike, we got another customer on the back row back here. Hallelujah. Yeah, we sell those for 100 bucks a piece. I am teasing you. I am teasing you. You know that's not true. They're free. <laughs> that's also at the website, I think. If it's not, I'll get it there. Is it? Okay. I don't even... People know my website better than me. Eh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, for Tim, I'm going to, he may already know this. What, what this is, this part of this service, is um, every confession here has been extracted either from directly from the Word or mo most of them are things that have been revealed through Pastor Dave down through the years that we know is God's plan for this place. So we're just taking a cue from Abraham. We don't actually, like one of them says a thousand people are being born again every week here at the prayer center. We're not really seeing that right now. <clears throat> but we're going to go, go ahead and call those things which be not as though they were until they are. <clears throat> There's not many places you can go and... Uh, be led in, in uh, calling things that be not as though they were. Humans don't normally do that. We call things that are the way they are, which keeps them the way they are. <laughs> you know? So anyway, this takes about 30 minutes. It's good practice. So just repeat after me. Say, Father, I worship you. I glorify you. And I praise you. You're not a man that you could lie. You have exalted your word above your name. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will never pass away. Therefore, I say, your glory is present at the prayer center. The blind see, 
the deaf hear, the, deaf hear. The, lame the lame walk, the dead are raised, the dead are raised. And, the poor, and the poor, they have the gospel preached to them. A minimum of a thousand people are born again at the prayer center every week. We have a minimum of 500 intercessors who are holding up the message that has come to maturity. We are able to get along with each other while the Father works revival in our midst. We have that kind of worship that takes us beyond the veil of the flesh in order that we may worship in spirit and in truth. We worship you, Father, out of our new nature. We give you family worship as your sons and daughters. Father, at the prayer center, those that come will see a people transformed to the nature of Christ. Father, we say, in the name of Jesus, no person ever leaves the prayer center the same way they came. Every person that comes receives a touch from the Good Shepherd. Father, those that come who are beaten down, discouraged, worn out, and tired, they won't leave that way. They'll be encouraged, strong, and mature. They'll leave standing upright, their shoulders squared, their heads held high, going forth as a mighty army to take this planet for your kingdom. In the name of Jesus. Father, your glory fills every service. Every person that comes drinks of your glory. They'll leave as earthen vessels filled with your glory, filled with your wisdom, filled with your love, filled with your grace, and anointed by your Spirit. They'll carry your presence with them They'll carry a revival around this world. Father, we declare, we preach your gospel. We'll never settle for man's gospel. Only yours. It's the gospel that saves, the gospel that fills, and the gospel that heals. That's why we say, lost, be saved. Empty, be filled. Blind, see. Lame, walk. Deaf, hear. Maimed, be whole. Dead, rise again. In the name of Jesus. Father, that's your gospel. We'll settle for nothing less. We're going for the gold. We have what we say. And we say at every service, the lost are saved, people are filled with the Holy Ghost, the blind see, the lame walk, the deaf hear, the maimed are made whole, and even the dead are raised in the name of Jesus. More than 12 legions of angels are loosed to prepare the way for revival. Angels are dispatched to the four corners of the earth, intercepting and stopping every mission and every assignment of the enemy that would bring circumstances against those who would come. Angels are changing those circumstances. By rearranging them, causing money to come, and by changing schedules. We say, every person that is to be here will be here 
in the name of Jesus. There is no devil big enough. No assignment crafty enough. No circumstances bad enough. That will keep even one from being here. Father, we declare your house full. Angels are moving back. The forces of darkness over this region. They're opening up a window. A window of light. 25 miles in every direction. Both horizontally and vertically. There is a fortress of angels. Surrounding us to keep back the darkness. Father, angels are dispatched now. Softening the hearts where hurts have wounded. Where calluses have formed. Where walls of defenses have gone up. <coughs> ain't, <coughs> ain't, excuse me. Angels are softening the hearts. <laughs> And creating atmospheres where the people can hear the voice of their shepherd. Angels are preparing their hearts now. So they're already receivers when they arrive. From the first word spoken. From the first song sung. From the first prayer prayed. To the end of every service. The people are free to receive from your spirit. The assignments of all devils against the prayer center. The people of the... <laughs> I'm sorry. The assignments of all devils <laughs> against the prayer center. The people of the prayer center and the leadership of the prayer center. <laughs> all those assignments are dismissed. <clears throat> In the name of Jesus, I declare those plans null and void. Devil, we're taking Tulsa from you. In fact, we already have. Jesus is Lord over Tulsa. Not you. We're an authority here. Not you. Devil, get out of Tulsa. Take all your demons with you. The King of Kings has made a decree. I am speaking in his stead. The King has declared. This is the acceptable year of the Lord. The King has decreed. Captives, you are free. Every person returns. To his original inheritance. That is the born again trail. Father you have restored our inheritance. And at the prayer center. The inheritance is not just known about. We don't just teach about it. But it's received. Manifested and seen. Father you have restored our fellowship with you. The firstborn told us to pray. Father, your will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. As in heaven, so on earth. As in heaven, so in Tulsa. There are no lost people in heaven. Therefore, we say, Tulsa is saved. There are no sick people in heaven. Therefore we, say, Therefore, we say, Tulsa is healed. Tulsa is healed. There, are no in there are no demoniacs in heaven. Therefore we say, Therefore, we say Tulsa, is Tulsa is delivered. And there is no poor people in heaven. Therefore we say, Therefore, we say Tulsa is prospered. Tulsa is prospered. And, Tulsa is and Tulsa is blessed. We declare every captive free. Now see this in your mind. See it also. Every wheelchair emptied. All of them. No exceptions. 
every artificial help, every artificial help. Wheelchairs, wheelchairs, crutches, crutches canes, canes, hearing aids, hearing aids glasses, 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 stretchers, stretchers bladder bottles. Bladder they, may they may need them when they come. They won't need them when they leave. They when they leave. And we'll have them here as trophies. To the glory of Jesus the healer. All manner of sickness and all manner of diseases are healed first time, every time, all of them, no exceptions. Jesus, you healed them all then. You healed them all now. That's what we say. And that's what we have. In the name of Jesus. Father, there are impartations of your spirit. We declare these are the most powerful. The most anointed. The most life-changing. The most revival-producing. Services in history. Fresh anointings. Fresh giftings. Like never before. Since the book of Acts, Father, it's you doing the works. Therefore, all things are possible. Let's talk to our souls. Say, soul, my own soul, I command you. Believe this. All things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. And every backslider will come back to God. They will never leave God again. So now, Father, in preparation, I forgive every person their trespasses against me. Father, forgive me all of my trespasses against you. I am freshly washed in the blood of the Lamb. In order that my record in heaven be perfect. Therefore I say. Because of the blood. What Jesus did for me. According to my record in heaven. I have never failed God. I lay down my life. That the life of Christ may be manifest in me. I take no offense. I give no offense, and according to my record in heaven, I never have. At the prayer center, the mind of Christ is delivered to both the sheep and the shepherds. It's delivered with such simplicity and with such clarity that the wayfaring fool could not misunderstand it. Therefore I say, the people at the prayer center, and especially me, we all understand every word that Pastor Dave teaches. And we declare that Pastor Dave teaches. <laughs> every need is met, no matter how large, no matter how small. There are no cases too hard. There are no cases too late. Whatever they come for to receive from Jesus, they get it, all of them, first time, every time, no exceptions. I declare every captive free, free in spirit, free in soul, free in body, all are delivered. All are, All are restored. Father, you are provider. Father, you are provider. Angels, are dispatched Angels are dispatched to gather in all of the finances, to gather in all of the finances and, everything and everything that is required. Things we know about now, things we, know about now. Things we don't even know about yet, because you are the God who answers before we call. I speak against the strongholds of lack, and I declare an abundance, abundance, be 
in the name of Jesus. Therefore we say, there is no lack. We operate from abundance. We operate from surplus. We have all and abound with many baskets left over. We have such abundance. We can pay the way for many to come and many to go. We send them out on prosperous journeys for God with abundance in a manner fitting for servants of the Lord. Our financial granaries are full because our king has found stewards he can trust. And I'm one of them. Father, if you need anything, come to my house first. Whatever you have need of, come to my house first. All I need to know is my Lord has need of it. And it's yours. I've been bought with a price. My life is not my own. I am a first class servant. Lord, I lay all my possessions at your feet. And I say again, Lord, if you need anything I have, it's yours. I love you, Lord, with all of my heart, all of my soul, all of my mind, and all of my strength. The second commandment is like unto the first. I love my neighbor as myself. I love my good neighbors. I love my bad neighbors. I love my mean neighbors. And I love my enemies. Jesus, you are my Savior. You are my Lord. Whatever you ask, that's what I do. I am your servant. I am your bond slave. By my own free will choice. I serve you, Lord, by serving these people that you love so much. I serve the good people. I serve the bad people. I serve the mean people. And I especially serve your enemies. Because you're trying to save them all. You'd like to use me to do it. All that I have is yours. My time is yours. My body is yours. My family is yours. I own nothing. I am your bond slave. Use me as you will. You are provider for me, my family, and all that I have. And I am available for your use. We lift up the blood-stained banner over this city. Written in the blood of Jesus on the banner are these words. Jesus is Lord over Tulsa. Jesus is Lord over Tulsa. Tulsa is in revival. Tulsa is in revival. And where Jesus is Lord... The Father's will is done. So, Father, have your way. Not just 30 fold, not just 60 fold, but 100 fold. Again, I say, lost, be saved. Empty, be filled. Captives, go free. Blind, see. Deaf, hear. Lame, Lame. Walk. walk. Maimed, Maimed. be whole. Dead, Dead. Rise, again. rise again. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Father, thine is, thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. Thine is the, thine is the glory. Thine is the glory. Forever. Forever. Your will be done in Tulsa. Will be done in Tulsa. Just, as Just as it is in heaven. As in heaven. As in heaven. So in earth. As in heaven, so in Tulsa. Tulsa is saved. 
Tulsa is saved. Tulsa is saved. Now shout about it. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. We have what we say in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you and praise you. We have what we say. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right, go ahead and extend your faith this way and, and maybe your hand. You don't have to repeat after me. This is our prayer request box. Father, every picture on this box represents a, an impossible case according to the world. Even modern medical science, they have no answers for these. But Father, nothing is impossible with you. Father, Jesus told us that when we prayed, we were to believe that we received when we prayed. Lord, that's why we're not praying again for them tonight. We're treating you like you're real, like you heard us the first time. Father, we believe we've received it. And that means we shall have it in Jesus' name. We shall see the manifestation of every one of these miracles. Father, for the prayer requests inside this box, people add to it continually. They mail them in in other ways. Father, there's probably everything from hangnails to suicide and everything in between. But Father, your word tells us that if we ask anything that's according to your will, that you hear us. And that's all we need to know because our confidence is if you hear us, then we have the petition that we desire of you. Father, we're joining our faith together with these, thanking you that you answer every single prayer that Jesus paid the price for them to have. And Lord, if a stranger sent in a prayer request, somebody who's not yet born again, not yet in the family, not yet in the kingdom, doesn't matter to us if they're atheist, agnostic, Buddhist, Hindu, Muslim, or anything else. If they had enough faith to send a prayer request here, and their request is according to your will, Father, we ask that you answer that prayer. Answer the prayer of the stranger like Solomon prayed. Father, do it in such an unusual and unique way that they'll have to know it was you that answered that prayer. So they can know like we already know that you're the only true and living God. And they can hear the gospel of your son and believe and be saved. Father, you're the same God today that you were in the book of Acts. We pray for every single prayer cloth that goes forward from this place. Father, we believe the same results will happen today that happened then. When those claws are laid on the sick, they will recover. When they're laid on people that have devils, the devils will go out in Jesus' name. So, Father, not only will many illnesses be healed, but many of those, Lord, that have been mentally oppressed, they'll be instantly set free. Alcoholics will be instantly set free. Drug addicts will be instantly set free. Marriages will be put back together. Wayward children will come to their senses and return to their parents' house. And you'll turn the hearts of the parents to the children. And, Father, many other, many other miracles you do because you haven't changed at all. You're the same God today that you were in the book of Acts. Father, it was good to see Pastor Dave here again this morning. We lift up Pastor Dave and Rosalie. We declare that their best days are yet to come. The best days of ministry and the best days of life are yet to come. In Jesus' name. But we do lift them up in all of their house. Tim and Leah Stemple in all of their house. Father, all of the ministers, not only here at the prayer center, but all around the world. Father, all of the staff, at not only here but around the world, and those that may not officially be on staff, but in your sight they are. And then, Father, all of the believers that are, we're all contending together for this revival. Father, we declare no weapon formed against any of them will prosper. But everything that they set their hand to do will prosper. In Jesus' name. Father, last but not least, we're faced with another week. We are going to use these hours on something. We have the same number of hours available to us as a king or the president of the United States. Father, it's so easy to let another day go by. And we were going to pray and we were going to spend time with you. But busyness got us again. But Father, someday we're going to stand before you and give a steward. We're going to give account of how we stewarded the life that you gave us. Father, we want to have the same testimony as Paul on that day. We kept the faith, we fought the good fight, and we finished the race that you set in front of us. Father, for us, that race is revival. 
And you will have your revival. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says. Amen. Amen.